Hi, this is AOA General of the Outlaw Legends Gaming Network. I'm going to show you how to control some units. Uh, request by Mamoseum. Let's get a few structures up right here. And a few random units right here. There we go. And of course we'll need this right here. Alright, so I'm gonna show you a little trick of unit control here. So for the buggies and bikes, which is kind of a popular one right now, is that you only need two key bindings for them. And you can bind them however way you like, but buggies on one, bikes on another. And then you, this way you have easy control with them to zip around with what you need to do. So, the thing with the buggies and the bikes is they actually can tank for each other depending on the situation. You have a lot of uh, tanks or other vehicles on the way, send the buggies in front, bikes in the back. If you've got a lot of infantry that you're not sure the buggies can deal with, send the bikes in the front and the buggies in the back. Like so. Now it can take some getting used to because they always try to fight over each other trying to go this way and that. So you can always do things like this. Separate them. And then this way you can just have them in the front. Sometimes you can use a scatter key as well. And then this way you can have them push through as well. But it's usually much more easier to do just do mouse controls and have them slide to the side right here. So now you've got like a straight line. Push the clump once to the front right here, and so forth like that. It just takes some getting used to, especially with the current release pathfinding issues. It takes some getting used to, but the playtest has that fixed somewhat, so you'll be able to work yourself around it. But keeping these units on separate keys like this helps in the long run. So for things like the medium tanks, You've got a damaged one that's in battle, and you're just fighting around and everything. You can actually use, as mentioned in one of the comments by the same guy, is that you can use the wrench, as you saw it flash up right there, and then it'll send the unit back. But it's still on the same key when you do that. So sometimes you can bring them back by accident by just clicking around hitting the, the, uh, the spacer or the bind control key. So when you do that, you can do something like that where you just rebind it, or in my case, what I like to do is when you send the unit back, or you use the repair icon, just number it something different. That way it automatically pushes the numbers out from this group. And you still got control of this unit. As you can see right there. So you can actually pick select units, like so. It takes some getting used to, of course, but to do that, you can just hit shift and left click, and then just rebind your key, and there you go. You can also select units of the same type by shift double clicking, and it selects those units of that type. Shift double click, shift double click, shift double click, shift double click. Now you've got the entire group. Send them on their way, hit one, there you go. The famous GDI one move tactic, which doesn't always work. So, uh, some players like to do the key, which selects all of the unit in the entire battlefield. Uh, I don't like to do that because I like to leave some units behind, and oftentimes I have them on separate control groups. Like, I can have them on two, these on one, so I can approach the direction to one side <clears throat> for the defense structure. Again, pathfinding. And then once you meet up back into the center, you just have them all selected right there, or just do the little click right there. It takes some getting used to, but once you get used to it, it helps in the long run. And then of course, for the infantry, let's see, you've got the tanks coming in, you don't have a lot of rocky guys or chem troopers, and they're coming in to crush. Always hit the scatter key. 
because what it does with the scatter keys when they're moving around like this is they're getting a higher chance of dodging vehicles because they're actually on the move already. Now some of the vehicles will actually run over the square that the unit is trying to get to, so they might get crushed that way. But the good thing is they're not balled up in a five stack like this. Instead of separated, like so. So now it's just a single attack. That device right. There you go. So there's a few tricks with that right there. Once I'd suggest getting practice with the buggies and bikes, using mouse control to separate the units in the best way that you can. In the separate groups. So that way you can get the maximum control in your units. Now, for things like an example of controlling said units, you've got, let's say, chem troopers. So we've got our ball of bikes right here. Okay. We see chem troopers approaching. Okay. So now we gotta kill them. Pull them back. Like so. It takes some getting used to, as mentioned. They might get scorched a few times, but at least they'll be shooting them once they approach. Pathfinding right there again. And this way they can do the maximum amount of damage. Uh, they'll still get scorched once in a while because the pathfinding is mentioned, but they will do the maximum damage. I'll actually show you an example in a game of the tanking mechanic and the destroying mechanic. This one right here. Alright, so this is against a player named Carl Ratty on Eternal Democracy. Both of us nod. Because lately what I've been doing is I've been purposely choosing nod against other players for testing reasons. So as you can see, he's moving over here to scout with the bike. Gonna come up with a Tiberium, bad idea, you never want to escape on Tiberium like that. Unfortunate that happens. So now I'm like, okay, let's do the scouting room. So now these are on separate keys. These are both on separate keys right here, as you can see. So I saw the bike, okay, there's the infantry, okay. Now let's do some fun. Snipe out the bike, there we go. So now we're going to separate our units and see what kind of damage we can do. Send the bike over here. Poke with this. Okay, infantry's coming down here. Now I bring the buggy up here. Shoot the power plant. Now he's going to split his infantry up right here. Okay. So now I control this right here. Do some poking with the buggy right here. Oh, there's the E3. Okay, I can't do much with that. Especially since this is low health already. So, okay. I'll tank with the bike. Which usually is not supposed to happen. Okay, snipe out the E3, there we go. Because he was on the move. Oh, too much damage, pull back. Okay, here, shoot the juicy bike. Ah, oh, there we go. And there you go. Both units are still alive now. So now he's got to, he's forced to make a barracks right here to pick out some E3 or get a defense structure up. And do, some, do a little bit of repair damage and then just move away. So they're both very low on damage, but both the units are still alive. I can always make a repair bay. That's no problem with me. So with this in mind, he's decided to do a flamer build. Probably because he's assuming from the airplanes that he might have seen that I'm going to do some sort of light mechanical rush. Move my MCB down to the bottom because I forced him to make a barrack, so I'm, I can kind of do whatever I want. I sent the infantry to the bottom, because I saw the barracks, and I wasn't sure if he was going to do straight up light tanks or infantry. I was still depending on those two right there. So get my econ up a little bit. By the way, he did the sell trick. Selling the refinery, get the extra harvester out. So I sent my infantry out right here because I want to see what he's doing. Okay. Infantry. So now I get a guard tower up and building. Now I've got my buggies. We'll see what we can do with that. Pull him back, do a little bit of the kiting trick. Push the harvester forward to take some of the damage and try to crush him, and then there's the guard tower. Push forward. There we go. 
he brings some more flamers over here, and then I start to realize, okay, this is all he's building, which in fact he's got a two racks going. So with that in mind, I just switch over to buggy builds instead, and then I start dancing around with the flame infantry. Airstrike coming down, so oh, too fast for that. Move back. Luckily, the airstrike didn't come from this side over here to instantly strike this. And now we just do some more dancing around, because he's trying to ball his guys up for maximum damage. So now he's going to push these guys forward. And then... Oh, a little bit of a scorch. There you go. Start separating, push back a little bit. Another little bit of a scorch, but nothing too dangerous. Oh, another one. Yeah, there you go. They're getting more down. Now I've got a bunch more buggies right here, so now I can just freely push forward right here. And then I bring the bikes with me. I don't really care if they get pushed to the front, because I'll soak some of the damage. And then there you go. Pretty much it. Right there. So as you can see, controlling the bikes on separate groups in the beginning right there helped to kill all the starting infantry. And then having them... Having the split trick with my mouse for the buggies helps do a lot as well. And there you go. So, I hope this was extremely helpful for you. Um, just get a lot of practice down, unit management for your mouse clicking and for the number keys, and then you should have everything set and down. It takes a lot of practice. But hey, everyone has to start somewhere. This has been AOE General of Outlaw Legends Gaming Network. Hope you enjoyed that. Control.